Okay, so my name is Sam and I am an LLNW intern. I'm Jair, I'm also an LLNW intern. And today we have Sandra Zavala Ortega. So Sandra, tell us a bit about your story and what led you to choose the career slash field you are in. Thank you. Um, yes, so I am a proud daughter of immigrants from Michoacan and Campeche, Mexico. Um, I have a brother and a sister. I'm the oldest. Um, I was born in Riverside, California, but I was raised in the Pacific Northwest since I was four years old. Uh, when we first moved to Washington, we lived on a berry farm um, in Woodland, um, the center area. Um, but then we moved to Hazeldell, where I started kindergarten at Sarah J. Anderson. And then I went to Discovery Middle School. And from there, I graduated from Fort Vancouver High School. Um, so... I then went to St. Martin's University up in Lacey, Washington, and I studied uh, community service with a minor in psychology. Um, after college, I started working in the Vancouver School District as a family community resource coordinator. So, um, so working with our families and working with our students that are um, our highest need um, within the, so I was working at Harney Elementary at that time. Um, but um, I've worked in various jobs, but I've worked as um, also a homeless liaison in the Evergreen School District. Um, but I really, really enjoy working with um, families and our students and helping them with resources and um, providing um, basic needs. And so that's been a lot of what I do. And now I'm currently serving as um, on the board for Vancouver School District and also now on the board for the Latino Leadership Northwest. Um, so I really enjoy working with my community and especially for our youth. Thank you. Um, the next question is, what's your motivation? I would say my biggest motivation right now is my son. Um, but what has motivated me through my life is my parents, you know, always wanting to um that they're proud of me um and also motivating me that I want to my siblings have also been a big motivation to um for me to be a big to be a good big sister um and I think another big part that motivates me is my community is being able to um kind of be an example and also um I hope to be a motivator to others that we can we can do it um but you know this question really got to me because I um I would really have to say my biggest biggest motivation is my eight-year-old self is who I wanted who would I have wanted someone to advocate for me um and I think that's really what motivates me thank you um and also I feel the older sister vibes <laughs> <laughs> yes lots of responsibility mm -hmm. too many uh, mm -hmm. so the next question can you talk about an event you witnessed you witnessed or were part of that changed your perspective or way of thinking mm -hmm. um what really came up in my mind when thinking about an event that I witnessed um an event that really changed me is when I was eight years old, I was um, sexually abused by a close cousin of mine. Um, at that time that this happened, I didn't understand or know what was going on. Um, I knew it was something bad, but I did not have the awareness or the trust of the adults around me to speak out. So it wasn't until my sophomore year in high school, um, I was part of the medical magnet at that time. Um, and our in our health occupations class, we look into we talk about sexual abuse and kind of the different parts of sexual abuse and what they are and what the consequences are. And so in that class was when I learned what my what happened, I guess naming what happened to me. Um so what happened to me and also kind of like what could be done to the perpetrator and kind of what I as a victim could do. Um, so this event really changed the way my thinking and my perspective in so many ways. 
Um, and after this event, I really lived with post-traumatic stress disorder as a child that I, you know, I didn't really know until now, but um, I did some examples would be reliving the event over and over in my thoughts, nightmares and sleep problems, constantly looking for possible threats. So I was very paranoid child <laughs> and still are, still am, um, easy, easily startled, um, denying that the event happened, um, and avoiding places or people with the, with that are with, like, I, I tried to avoid my cousin. I tried to avoid family, but it really was inevitable, in, inevitable, um, because I had to go because family wanted me to be there and my parents wanted me to be there. So, um, but this really, this event changed me in, in a way that I perceive relationships, trust, um, and family in a very different way. I value mental health and I value what it means to really speak out when you see something that is wrong or perceive something that is wrong. Um, I don't believe in staying quiet. I don't believe in keeping things a secret. Um, that even if losing... Um, family or friendships because I spoke out I'm okay with that it's hard it's not easy um but I'm I think I'm really working on breaking barriers and um changing that thank you for saying sharing that really mm -hmm. personal story um what advice would you give to the youth who are in their last year of high school or will soon transition into another important chapter in their life I feel like I give a lot of advice. <laughs> There's a lot to give. Um, but, you know, I would say my most is to make a plan, but but be okay with it changing um, and enjoying the journey. Um, que le echen ganas siempre. <laughs> um, but I think my biggest... Uh, advice would be to find a support system, no matter where you are, um, to find mentorships, to find friendships. Um, and friendships can be from like an 80 year old person or 60 year old person to maybe even a, a teenager that you think are just is really helpful. I think finding a family, some sense of family, wherever you are, I think really helps you and guides you. Um, I wouldn't be where I am if I didn't have all the support systems that I, that I've had throughout my life. Um, and I've sought them out. Like they haven't come to me. I've, I've reached out, you know, I, when I was in college, I went to, I looked for the Hispanic round table. I looked for adults that would support me with my education. Um, but it's really and because I felt supported, I was able to kind of get through a lot of the hard things. Yes, I definitely second that advice. Mm -hmm. That's really good advice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next question is, what does it mean to you to be part of this community here in Vancouver? It means the world to me to be part of this community. It's interesting, but um, it's, it's just an interesting sometimes to think about where I could have been, you know, if my parents didn't decide to come here, if um, we would have moved back to Mexico, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that I think about like that, but it's kind of, um, I feel very honored and, and very um, blessed in a way to sit, to be here where I am. Um, you know, growing up, I, I would admire a lot of the, the leadership adults who made changes in our community who are fighting for us and now I'm part of that and it's weird <laughs> to look back and say oh you know um so I hope to be able to be that for others mm -hmm. um the next question is are you now that you're a part of the first LNW board how does it feel and are there any goals you have for the upcoming for this upcoming year so i feel very honored and excited to be part of uh both of these boards you know on our vancouver board and also the ll northwest 
Um, because I was elected by my community to take part in the Vancouver School Board, it's also brought up new opportunities and connections. And so that's also why I was, I've been get, granted this opportunity, right? And um, and being part of the Latino Leadership Northwest Board. Um, and really my goal is to listen and learn and to advocate for our youth um, for what they want and that what they need for them to succeed in their future. Um, I think that to me, that's um, for both of the, these boards, that's really my my goal. And for the VPS board, you are also the first Latina VPS board president to be elected. How does that feel, especially because you were a VPS alumni as well? Mm -hmm. It's a very surreal experience um, to be the first Latina on the board and now the first president. Um, so as president, really, I'm, you're kind of like, you become the face of the district. Um, and so you are there really to respond to a lot of like the emails and, and um, communications. And you really voice, um, you try to take into consideration when all the board would respond. So really I represent all of their voices at times. And so I have to be careful as to kind of what I say and how I say things. Um, so it's, it's a big responsibility, right? Um, so it's a very surreal experience to be sitting there and saying that I'm now the president when walking into the school district, I didn't speak any English. I, I remember hearing and like they were from the Charlie Brown, right? So it's like, mom, 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 mom. <laughs> like you don't, I don't remember understanding anything they said. And so to now being, going from a student to staff and to now the board as a very, I would say I'm very privileged to be on this at this table and I feel very honored and I feel very grateful um, to everyone who's, been there for me and to that supported me in all of this um but I think when really what I hope is that I'm also leading the path for more of our youth to take part in on our board more of our BIPOC youth our Latino youth our African-American youth to really be on the board at some day you know I won't I'm the first but I hope not to be the last dang that 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 touched me <laughs> <laughs> um, you kind of touched this on a bit a little like are there any parallels of being both being part of both these boards the LNW and the VPS one yes I mean I would say the main parallel really is voicing and advocating for our youth right for in our community I think um, which I do not take lightly um, but really I, what I love about the Latino Leadership Northwest is that um, I'm able to kind of do kind of like a hyper focus into our our my comunidad you know and be able to support um students like me and on the board I really am there on the Vancouver board I'm there to support all of our students right which and I that's really my goal all the time but with the Latino Leadership Northwest is kind of giving me an opportunity to really be closer to our Latino youth um and advocate and hear them as to what they think and what they feel and what they what, what they need. And that concludes our questions for this interview. And we are so, so thankful for you, Sandra, for taking the time to meet with us today. Um, and we really, really appreciate all the really thoughtful answers that you have given us today. Um, Jair? Yeah, thank you for all the knowledge and wisdom that you've given us. Of course, and I appreciate both of you and um, ganas. <laughs> thank you. Do you have any final words? Um, I would just, my final words would be to not hesitate to reach out to adults that um, I think sometimes it may feel a little intimidating because we are in leadership, but really we 
we aren't. I think really we are. I especially, um, I love to chat. If you want to go for coffee, if you want to go for a walk, um, I'm always up to taking time and to supporting my community. If it's even just listening and seeing how we can support you or connect you with people who can um, help you with your future. I think that's really, um, that's why I'm here. That's um, what I'm hopeful to support all of you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, we will make sure that you <laughs> hear this. Well, thank you. I appreciate both of you. Thank you. Thank you.